can see everything. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to talk today is really, uh, as I watch the other talks, I noticed there's a lot of hands on keyboards. There's a lot of heroics. There's a lot of people working things through. And then sometimes things don't work out because humans make errors. So today we're going to talk about what we do with Terraform uh, as a practice. And then we're going to talk about how things should be driven through a CI CD so we can create an engineered trade. So infrastructure as code is an engineered trade, which is not currently in place. You're going to see a lot of stuff today you've never seen before. Uh, and it's because I work with a lot of engineers that are literally setting the global practices. Okay, so let's talk about, I'm trying to create an analogy so everybody understands why we're trying to create an, en, uh, an engineering practice around this, why, why we're trying to figure out better methods of implementation. If I was to build a bridge, I wouldn't start just by building the bridge. There's a lot of anti-patterns today within uh, infrastructure as code. Most people take the solution of most convenience. I run commands. And when you run commands, things don't work out. It, it, it doesn't matter if you're on a conference and you're presenting or you're in a client and you're uh, you know, a soldier of fortune when it comes to Terraform, things go wrong. So Terraform applies and just running a deployment that creates a build isn't really what we should be doing if we're building something that needs to be consistent and reliable. So if I just do the build portion, do you think the bridges would be safe? No, right? There's, there's drawings, right? There's validation, there's bylaws, there's all types of things that are done before we do a build. So uh, why is this the most uh, common practice in infrastructure as code? And many people interpret this as GitOps, but it's not really GitOps. So we're going to talk about what it should actually look like so we don't have these anti-patterns anymore. Okay, so if I check things before I build and I check things after I build, this is what makes it an engineered plan or trade. Uh, and we're going to go into what the pre-checks are to building infrastructure. Again, I'm making plans. I'm validating what I'm going to build isn't going to make an error or not work because I don't want to be in a circumstance where it's not working because it doesn't build confidence. It doesn't build confidence for customers. It doesn't build confidence when you're doing engagements. It doesn't build confidence when you're doing demos. That's not enough. So I'm going to do the build and it's going to be seamless and completely boring. That's what it's supposed to be. A build shouldn't matter. I don't need a hero. I don't need a SME. I need the orchestrator to do the work for me. And we'll get into that. I then going to check afterwards. If I'm going to put people on the bridge, I'm going to validate that that build meets my specs. And if it doesn't meet my specs, no one's going to use it because people could get hurt. In this case, you might have your SLAs impacted or your, your, your brand impacted. So what are the post checks? And we'll actually go into these. Then we, we're taking GitHub actions. They, they are uh, uh, one of the GitHub experts. There's multiple layers to this, but the context is things don't go well when we use SMEs and heroes to do our work that know, you know Kubernetes perfectly or they know Terraform perfectly. I want them to build their capabilities into an orchestrator so that bridge is built perfectly every time. It doesn't matter if you slept well or not. It doesn't matter who's on call or building it that day. The orchestrator builds it perfectly every time. Now, there's more to it than that. The orchestrator also supports the Git flow, the method at which I know what's going to be created based on the environment or the SDLC stage. What I mean by that is if I'm in dev, I might build infrastructure that's not permanent because that bridge isn't supposed to stay in development. I'm just testing it out. So I'm going to destroy it. But when it goes to production, I shouldn't allow anybody to destroy it. So that Git flow handles that uh, context around it. Okay, so if you're, you're trying to think of the orchestrator, people ask me, what's an orchestrator? That is not running an infrastructure pipeline. An orchestrator is a CI CD process where you deliver your infrastructure with the pre checks, post checks, as part of a larger delivery to get to production from the moment you commit your code. And if you look at the top right, you can pick your colors and lay out the driveways seamlessly every single time if someone's actually built the orchestrator. It's just perfection. It's not about the guy who's putting the bricks inside. It's about the machine delivering it consistently every time. This is a little heavy, and I'm going to go into each of these. I just want everybody to understand that building infrastructure isn't about building the infrastructure. It's about the trade, the engineering trade around it. What modules are allowed is your starting point. I want a hardened creation process for that validation. When I do a code pull request and I want to merge something in, I'm going to do a lot of things before. These are the pre-checks. I'm going to check. I'm going to lint it. I'm going to do a security scan. Everybody's familiar with TFSEC. I'm going to do a testing provider to make sure everything's functioning. I'm actually going to update the docs. And I'm going to check my format so I don't make a mistake of writing the wrong command in. These are the these are the shift left methods so that when I have engin engineering plan, 
it's going to go as I see fit and the pipeline is going to run it for me, right? In this case, GitHub Actions and I'll actually show everybody. Image creation, again, sometimes I need to know what I'm putting out there. It could be a Docker image. It could be actually an image of RHEL 8, RHEL 9. It could be Windows Server 2022. I want a hardened profile that I then deploy uh, using my plan. I use my modules. This process is what everybody's familiar with. I have a Terraform plan. I have a Terraform apply. Do I do dynamic inventories to pass it on to config as code or Ansible? Probably not, but you should be. Do I integrate it with change management? Do I do all the pre-requests or pre-checks? And do I do all the post commits? Do I clean up? Do I do my post uh, creation compliance scanning? Is what I created actually as I expect? Is there any vulnerabilities? And if it's not, tear it down, right? Don't leave it in place. Uh, just a, a little humor here is like cleaning up matters. You, you Cleaning up in the sense of development when you don't need to keep it, don't leave services uh, left behind. Or if you're installing prerequisite things or you have files that are left on your runners, on uh, uh, you, need to clean, you need to clean them up, right? So this is part of the process. Again, Git flow is also part of it. So if I'm using GitHub Actions, I need to have ways that I merge from particular branches and set precedences around the engineering trade of infrastructure as code and deploying applications that works the same way to prevent people from doing things they're not supposed to do, such as commit code from a developer feature branch to master. I've seen this so many places. Why do we do that? Solution of convenience. Does it actually give you confidence for production? Does it go through any per particular quality checks or gates or, or a particular promotion of code? No, because we're not practicing. We're doing solutions of convenience. I press Terraform apply and I think I've done my job. But in reality, that's not what you should be focusing on. You should be making sure the Terraform apply is flawless. Okay, so I'm gonna go into exploring it. What, what does the pre-checks look like? What does post-checks look like? So I've taken this from our Git, GitHub actions. I'll actually show the GitHub actions in the next uh, phase. But what you see here is I pre-install my tool dependencies so that I can actually validate format. I, I can do my docs. I can do TF linting. I can do TF sec. And then if it's all good, I'm going to move towards build, right? This is a trade. I'm not doing bespoke changes. I'm doing a rigorous methodology to make my plans before I build them, just as an engineer would do when they're building a bridge. If I'm building something, five seconds, added two machines. In this case, it's VMware. It could be any cloud, doesn't really matter. Any cloud is any cloud, private or public, if you use Terraform correctly, because it's multi-cloud capable. But the context here is, I don't care about those five seconds. And I don't care if someone does a Terraform apply. That's, a, that's not a consistent method. It's, did I check everything before I built it? Did I check everything after I built it? so that I don't leave behind uh, you know, uh, orphaned infrastructure or content, and I don't create something I wasn't expecting. And I don't depend on heroes who know the infrastructure really well because they make mistakes, doesn't matter how great someone is. But if you take their capabilities and you put it into one of these processes, what happens in the end is you create a reliable and consistent method to deliver infrastructure as an engineered trade. And if you're not a good trades person, I wouldn't have them build my build, uh, my my bridge, right? If someone just goes straight to building a bridge, I wouldn't trust them even if they were bright. I need them to do these checks. In the post checks, it's more about the cleanup uh, and maybe removing test infrastructure after you're done. Maybe you had some things that you're using to instrument some things. Don't leave behind anything that you were using to set up the environment. Don't leave behind anything that you were doing as prerequisites. And sometimes don't even leave behind your your developer feature environments because I've done my check testing, it worked, I don't need to keep it. Additionally, you want to go into something like uh, getting compliance reports. This is an open SCAP report that's part of our post check. If I build something, I wanna go and check that machine that it actually is, if it's a machine or whatever you're doing, different methods for different capabilities uh, for containers or machines. Uh, but in this case, I'm just using a machine because it's the most common method today. I'm gonna check if it's compliant. I want to know that what I built is safe and within the governance that I was looking for. That's a post check. It's not about the build. It's about the plans before and the post checking after to make sure everything's safe. I'm actually going to shift now into uh, hopefully my screen uh, changes very easily for everybody. I'm just going to shift into here. Let me know if it's very clear and everybody can see. Uh, can I get a thumbs up? I can't actually know if everybody can see. Are we good? Hello. 
Yeah, it looks good. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I didn't want to go ahead if everybody couldn't see. So what you can see here is I'm going to do a pre-install of all the tools I need to do what I really need to be doing, which is validating things. So this is all the types of uh, installation of tools, making sure I can do the pre-commit checks. It might be uh, JQ to parse JSON, whatever it is that you're doing, you're going to pre-install all your tool dependencies. So I have an engineered trade. It's not about Terraform apply. It's about everything that makes Terraform perfect because perfect is what we're aiming for. And if it's not perfect, you're going to fix it and it's going to find it. So you don't have unreliable results. At this point, you're going to do execute pre-commit check. All of these, you can even parse it to say passed. In reality, that's not actually what the output is, but we've beautified this so that people who are looking at this, who aren't SMEs, who aren't heroes, can still manage this and deal with, oh, okay, so formatting was bad. Perfect. I don't need to go through which line of formatting was bad right now. I just need to know that it failed on that and I'll work on it later. So you can see that pre-commit check is part of uh, before I build my modules or before I build my infrastructure. Post, post, uh, post checkout, there could be lots of cleanups. Uh, you could be destroying environments or, 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 or you know, removing environments if you don't need them. I'm just switching between things. But again, if I'm executing the plan and I'm adding two nodes or changing the nodes or destroying nodes, I'm very pleased that my documentation is updated. But this I don't care about. This is the part that I'm confident. This is not the part that should be dependent on me knowing what commands I run. It should be dependent on the pipeline always doing what's expected so that there is a reliable and safe resource produced. Um, I just try to go through more of it. If I'm doing a build, you know, obviously you need to have your Terraform ready. You need to have your, your runner ready. You might need to install Go because you need to do some other commands that need to be done. Uh, you go through all these types of things, but within the Terraform plan, there's got to be uh, pre-commit checks and post-commit checks. Uh, additionally, I think it's very important that you create very good documentation. Again, uh, I didn't cover that specifically, but I think it's important that you document how everything is built. What are you going to do beforehand as an engineer trade? And then document the process at which you are showing how the merges occur and how people can promote code through GitOps, right? From which environment can I destroy? Which environment promotes to the next? Again, so you have a consistent SDLC process that does one thing, builds consistently and gives you confidence as you go to production. If it doesn't do that and it's dependent on a SME that knows the right commands, uh, again, end result is that bridge isn't going to last very long and you're not really sure you're going to get it. Again, you can produce a report. This is the report that you've seen. So I actually have all the windows from the screenshots. This produces an evaluation report of the infrastructure that was created. This was a RHEL 8 machine that I wanted to validate for CIS compliance. Guess what? Uh, we pretty much there with the exception of ETCD host because it's not actually running. It was a template. Uh, but what we're trying to get at is I'll, I'll stop sharing at this point. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is if you have infrastructure as code, make sure you create your plans, make sure you create your engineered trade so that you're not dependent on a single person or a few people that know what they're doing, because in the end, it's not consistent. Technology is not consistent when it's orchestrated by people. Technology is consistent when technology orchestrates itself. Uh, so with that, GitHub Actions helps us at Benchmark deliver you know, consistent environments, uh, heavily compliant environments and very repeatable processes that don't have failures. Uh, I just, I'm trying to change the global practice here and hopefully uh, others start adopting this beyond the Terraform apply because it's an anti-pattern to create without pre-commit and post-commit post checks. Oh, struck by mute again. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. It was really, I really loved your energy going through this talk. And when you put your hat on, I was like, oh, I need to do this too. So I got a <laughs> shout out. To I Katie can't pull it hands. off. I can't pull it <laughs> off now. I got messy hair, so I'll keep it on for the day. Oh, that's, now it's on for the rest of the day now that I've got you hat got hair. <laughs> but, thank you so much for joining us today. We don't have time for Q&A, but um, happy to Perfect. have you in the chat if there's anything that's going on or anything you'd like to share. And yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Jason, for having us. Cheers. And I will...